Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to a new episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, our guest is me. Um, What I wanted to do this week was to actually talk about uh, what to do before you quit your job, all the steps to go through. Um, I did a podcast uh, episode on my other show, Advanced Real Estate Investing Talk, uh, which actually just led to a lot of emails <laughs> about people asking for the details of, uh, of leaving my job and what all the things I went through. So what I want to do is this week was to go through all those things as best I can remember um, for quitting your job. Um, I think, first of all, before you quit your job, you got to uh, look back at what, what your job is providing. What are you going to lose out on? And for me, whenever I quit my job, uh, what was I going to lose out on? Well, benefits is the big one. You know, your uh, your dental, your glasses, your health benefits for drugs and other things. Uh, those are going to be gone. So you may have to even factor in the price of replacing those, um, putting in, um, you know, something in place from this, even the same company that your uh, employer was using or some other company. Um, it's actually still one thing on my list that we haven't replaced yet. Um, but for us, I'm like, I'm still fairly young. Um, and so we don't really use much of it anyway. So it is something that is on my checklist to actually get set up again this year. But uh, it is one thing you're going to lose. So you got to think about what all the stuff you're going to lose. Um, for me, I did a match program with my employer for RSPs. So uh, that does help my taxes at the end of the year. So um, whether you believe in RSPs or not, um, either I have to make more money uh, to offset that or do more tax beneficial uh, real estate investing, such as doing burrs and refinances um, to compensate for those sort of things because I did get a tax deduction because of the RSP contributions every year. They were automatically done. So I'm gonna, uh, tax wise, it's one thing to think about before you're doing this. Um, For me, when I had a job, my job was providing me a truck. So I was gonna lose my truck. That's that's one thing to think about. Um, At this point, I've, now that my wife and I are both at home, we've, I still want to get something new, but um, <laughs> you'll, you'll start of see the, the ongoing, um, when, we, when I'm talking about this, a lot of stuff does, is going to involve your wife, and um, does it make sense to have two vehicles in the driveway when you're both at home? I, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's the one thing we're having right now. Um, I'd like to get, like, well, we don't go listing vehicles. We're going to go down like a crazy rabbit hole if we do that. But I've been looking at vehicles to get, and maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. Um, for us, it's going to be those one-offs whenever I want to go hang out with my friends for a whole weekend and she won't have a vehicle. Um, so it, 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 is, it doesn't make sense to do it, does it not? It is one thing to factor in if you are going to replace the, your vehicle, right? Um, another thing to think about that uh, with all of this is are you leaving your job? Or are you and your wife leaving your job? Who who all is in fact affected by this whole thing? Like how many people are you going? Do you have any backup funds coming in? For instance, does is your wife um, does your wife have an income already coming in? Because then perhaps it's not even that big of a deal for you to leave your job. Um, in my case, it it was a big deal. We need to replace incomes. Um, so. Um, you've decided you've looked over the scenario you figured out what your goals what you need to do and i'm going to skim over this really high level but you need to get your cash flow to a certain amount whatever you've decided um if you listen to the podcast i had with matt geertz uh he wanted cash reserves he wanted a, a year's worth of cash reserves i think if my memory is right uh in that ballpark anyway um so you want your cash reserves uh to be there and you want a cash flow good podcast is over um, that's all you need to leave your job. No, that, that is not all it. Um, and the thing about um, real estate is there's ups, there's downs, and you need to make sure that you've weathered the storm so that you have flattened out your business. Um, so what am I talking about? So maybe before you do some of these things, when you're in the, I'm thinking about leaving my job stage, You start moving some of your uh, rental properties from cash or from short-term loans, like the one-year loans or even the five-year loans, and you start flowing these into 
30 year loans like you want you almost have to think of this like just like my episode on surviving a recession um you got to think about this the same way right you need to be able to survive off of this um so my three rules to survive a recession actually it's not my rules that's a complete lie joe fairless's <laughs> rules that i uh that i repeat sometimes um is you need to have capex funds so not only do you need reserves for you personally you're going to need reserves for your properties um you have to live off of this you can't be doing cash calls from yourself because that's your money you need to live off of before you could get lazy because you didn't need this money it was excess money and you were living off of your jobs income right so you can't be doing these cash calls so now you have to set up reserves there so capex funds make sure you have those topped up um Make sure your property's cash flow is the recession proof one but we've already been doing that the whole time and uh and then like the thing i was saying the the third thing you need is long-term loans to even this this whole flow out um so you now have your reserves set up for your rental properties and you have your cash flow um how long do you need your cash flow to be going um so what what worries me is people are like, hey, I just started real estate investing and now I left my job. And I'm like, you've only been doing real estate investing for six months. So what is a good amount of time to proof of concept your cash flow, right? Um, what I started doing for a whole year was to pull out of my business what I needed to live off of, right? So do it for a year is what I would suggest. But you can jump the gun. Everyone has different levels, uh, thresholds of danger that they're interested in. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you want, it's not like, oh, I hit my cash flow goal this month, leave my job, because there are months that are up and months that are not as high, right? So I wanted proof of concept. I wanted to pull the money out every month. And the problem um, wasn't really that the cash flow dipped on certain months. It was that I would use the cash flow for things, right? You know, what do you mean, Glenn? I would use the cash flow for paying for private loans. That uh, that's still real estate related. Um, it saved me injecting new money or anything else, right? So I would use it for private loans. Uh, I would do private investing, and so I'd borrow money from people and do projects. But you have to pay them back money. When I do private lending, I don't borrow above one hundred percent. Uh, I know some people, they do say borrow more than you need. And then you could just pay your interest payments through the whole project with their money. You pay them back their own money. I don't believe in that. I believe that's a Ponzi scheme to be taking people's money and paying them back with their own money. So I never borrowed above 100% of a project. So I need to come up with that money. So I would inject money from my own cash flow into these projects. So you need to now plan for those things too so you have to start creating um not capex but similar to that for your private investing deals right because you need to have the money to, in order to pay everyone back on time um so you got all that stuff going um everything's kind of flat uh you've, you've made it so that this is live offable uh do you just leave your job now well in my case and i think in most people's cases um you have a spouse um and so you're going to have to have that conversation about leaving your job and the biggest thing is just like if you're taking money from an investor it's proof of concept so if you have went through those same steps and you've cash flowed for a year and you've lived off of that cash flow you haven't used that money to go for private lending or pro other projects or you haven't used your money for other nonsensical things like getting new laptops and blowing your cash flow and stuff and so you've actually been able to live off this for a year it's gonna be a lot easier conversation to have with your wife or husband or whatever you have um to, to, to decide uh that this is something that you could do full time right um i had a lot more to lose so i wanted to make sure this worked for a long time before leaving a job i didn't want to leave my job and then go harder work maybe i'll go down that path slightly before i finish this list too when i started investing in the u.s i did it by myself and had to go through the growing pains of doing that glensutherland.com coaching a 12-week coaching program done one hour per week over zoom from the comfort of your own home classes are kept to five people to be able to answer everyone's questions Shortcut the process, make fewer mistakes, curriculum available 
at glensutherland.com slash coaching. So I, I think a lot of people didn't understand that um, when I was doing the 20 or 30 uh, renovations or projects per year, um, I did have a full-time job and I was able to do that. And a lot of people that I do in my, that have come in the coaching program, they're, they have the mentality that I'm going to learn how to do a few of these, one or two projects in the U.S. And whenever I get this good, I'm going to quit my job and then I'm going to work really, really hard to build it into a business. Um, that works, but what about this as a solution instead? What about if instead of doing that, you worked mm, one hour, four hours a week on your real estate, or maybe more off the start until you get all your systems going, right? But I'm not talking the podcast or any other stuff, but actually in your real estate. And a lot of the job is going to be searching for deals, so which is fun for a lot of people. Anyway, um, so what if instead you built your business out so you were working this on uh, four hours or eight hours a week? right um you found your time maybe a couple hours each night or um you worked on sundays or saturday whatever worked for you and you found the time to do this while you still had a job think about this now whenever you leave your job you now have uh, figured out how to do this many projects only working your four hours a week does that not sound more appealing than quitting your job and taking on another job that's 40 to 80 hours a week um, I would rather <laughs> get this all figured out part time and then, you know, continue to work part time. Um, and that's what I do. That's what I do now. Um, OK, let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. So you want to leave your job. What are the things do you need to do beforehand? So I used to live in Cambridge. And one thing that I decided that I needed to do before leaving my job was to move. Um, my house was four years old. I built it. I lived in it. And I really liked the house. Um, but it didn't have the yard I wanted. And I did want this yard. And one thing you got to think about is when you leave your job and you're, you've are you got this life design, so you're not going to work a lot of hours. Now, what are you going to fill your time with? What are you going to do? Um, for me, a lot of my hobbies, I liked having a yard. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, I build a rink every year for my kids. So I wanted a big area for the a rink. So I bought over an acre of land to have all this stuff on there, right? And then I'll eventually fill it in with toys um, and, and fun stuff to do back there. Um, but that's one thing you have to do. You have to think about this because once you leave your job, if you want to get those mortgages um, from T Royal, Scotia, BMO, um, all those, all those Canadian banks, all the credit unions, you're going to have to personally qualify to get those super cheap interest rates of the 1.5% or 2% or whatever they're offering right now. Um, so you're going to need to qualify for those. So you, the, you should do this while you have a job. It's going to be a lot easier. Okay, so now you've moved your home, right? This, and this isn't a quick step, especially right now in Ontario with the bidding wars. So uh, I went through that whole process, moved my house, now I'm getting close, right? I've got some of the big stuff done. I have my cash flow performing properly. I've got my reserves set up for uh, private lending, my reserves set up for myself uh, to live off of, uh, and move my principal residence, requalified while I still have the income from my job. So what do I now want to do? Well, the next step, because I wasn't in a super rush to do this, I didn't have a terrible job. So my next step was to start going to all the banks and applying for new lines of credit or asking them to extend lines of credit. Um, do I need these lines of credit? I do not. I, I work with other people's money. So I do not actually need these, but I like to have them. Um, I want spare money. I wanted to call it, well, maybe I'll just use that what I call it. I call it oh crap money. I want oh crap money so that if I need to pay back a private lender. If I need the money for something, I have it, even if I, on, on top of my reserves, because that reserve money is not to be used. It's not to be used for things. It's supposed to be sitting there just in case. And in my case, I kept a year's worth of after-tax salary there just in case in just a high interest savings account, which earns very little. <laughs> um, so apply for your lines of credit. Uh, if you want to buy some of your properties or some, maybe some of your properties in the United States, 
you might want to see, because at this point I've sold off my Canadian properties, right? So I don't have the Canadian properties anymore. So before I didn't meet the criteria to work with the Canadian banks in the United States. So right now might be the time to see if I could qualify uh, to refinance some of my existing properties into the Canadian banks in the US and get the cheaper interest rate. Um, so do that, do any sort of refis or anything that you have to personally qualify for. Get those all done while you have a job. It will make your life far easier. Okay, so now you've got all that set up. What do you got left? Well, what about my job? I need to get rid of some of these things before I leave, right? So what am I talking about? What kind of things? Um, I guess at this point, you've already had the discussion with your wife and she's okayed that you could leave your job in a few months. So what you need to start doing is using up your benefits. So get yourself a new pair of glasses. Um, get yourself to the dentist while you still have all the benefits. Uh, fill up your prescriptions if you have prescriptions. Use up your benefits because you will not have them afterwards. Um, in my case, I had points. Um, your, my manager used to give us points for stuff. So you need to cash those points out. So I cashed it out and got like $500 in gift cards that I can use for coffee and stuff. Um, so get those all out too beforehand. Um, some of the smaller stuff I wanted to get done before I quit my job was I wanted my website updated. There was a bunch of things I wanted on there. Um, I got most of that done. Um, it's an ongoing battle though. Um, there's always things I like to change and um, part of it is my own fault. Uh, if you look at my web page, there's the one picture, the main picture there that um, I want to replace and my uh, web designer wants to replace. And I, I haven't found a, a substitute photo for it yet. But so some of those things you go, well, Glenn, your site is an upside. Because I know some people are thinking that if they go to my site all the time. It's not fully undone. Yeah, but I got most of it done. And I reprogrammed the whole thing. So it works nicer anyway. So I wanted to get those things done. And like I said, um, my, my employer used to give me a cell phone, right, and a truck. And so um, I wasn't going to worry about the truck. But uh, I had to get a new cell phone. Well, that's, that's a pretty simple thing. Go to the store, get a cell phone. Yes, I did that. But one thing you forget with this new technology and how everything kind of works is your cell phone is the like backward recovery for a lot of things. And you need to start a list. So I would suggest getting your cell phone several months before quitting your job and start a list of everything that has your cell phone because you need to get them all switched ahead of time. Some of the easy ones are like your property managers. They all need your new cell phone. And even for mine, if you use anyone who uses Appfolio, which is a common property management software, uh, if you use Appfolio, it, almost every month, I think, or every 30 days, it makes you do a recovery based on your phone number and it sends you a text to get in. And same thing goes with your bank accounts. Um, the hardest one, if you don't get this switched, is Canada Revenue Agency. If you ever tried to call them, the wait time is ridiculous. It's so much easier to update your phone number before you sw <laughs> while you still can log in and recover back to your current or old phone number um, to do this. And I guess that's all kind of links in with the website. If you're getting a new phone number, you need to update everyone you know um, on this phone number. You need it updated. For me, I put my phone number on my website. You need your phone number updated on your website because I am a people person and I will talk to people. Um, but also, usually, if you do call me, maybe I should put this <laughs> in there. Um, a lot of times, if I don't know your number, I will text back and we can set up an appointment to, to talk um, rather than just taking random calls at any point of the time. Because sometimes I can solve these by just giving you a link to a certain podcast where we totally cover this topic. Um, but yeah, get everything updated with everybody. So this could be corporate docs. You have your phone numbers in them. It could be like, you know, the states, you know, for whatever LLC, LP, C Corp, all those docs sometimes have your phone numbers in, in them. Get everything up to date uh, before you do this. Some stuff you can do it afterwards, but you know, like I said, there's certain things that are easier. Um, and you're gonna need new business cards. You're gonna need new business cards because guess what, From in my case, phone number changed. No more phone number. And the last thing I want to talk about kind of is, or one of the last things I think anyway, <laughs> is the different ways to leave your job. So I think off the start, I mostly just talked about cash flow, right? And cash reserves to have going, right? Um, but 
what I didn't talk about is that I do about a quarter of my projects are flips. So there is flip cash that's coming in. And in all honesty, I don't factor flip cash into my day to day to how to retire or how to quit uh, doing the job. It's not in there. Flip cash. The flip cash is um, I've already planned it. I don't need it. So that can be ways that could be the money to use for those other projects where I need money to pay for private lenders. I could build up a big reserve to do that. Uh, and I could use my flip cash to buy more projects on my own. I could use my flip cash to put in a pool to buy an Argo. <laughs> that, those are some of my things I want to buy really soon anyway. Um, but yeah, so you want to buy, you can use these things, but I, I personally didn't factor it into my numbers. I was trying to live off of my cash flow. Um, I do have a revenue source from coaching as well. Um, you could get a revenue source from doing referrals. There is a lot of things that run on referrals in the United States to, to build some uh, passive income. It's another number that's going to be hard to factor in like every month I'm going to get a certain number of those in order to make me able to leave my job. Um, but some other ways, I earn income, Airbnb, um, some people do it through wholesaling. So you could do um, a side project uh, to wholesale some of your deals if you're finding your own deals as well. Um, and yeah, uh, you could be, do some tax lien deed investing or become an agent. Anyway, uh, I hope that was pretty helpful. Um, that was my main list. Um, I bet you as soon as I hit publish for this podcast, I'm going to think of like 10 more. Um, so, but there is a whole bunch of steps. There's a lot of things to think about before you quit your job. Um, so hopefully that was a good list and got you in the mentality of how I'm thinking about whenever I go to quit my job. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And I'll hopefully see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.